At the top of the render settings panel, you find the export presets section. First, you have your own customized presets. Then you have the custom button. And then we have the pre-existing presets for some of the most common destinations for our exported files. You don't need to go to the deliver page to use these presets, but they can be useful in the deliver page as a template, a starting point from which you can alter the settings to your own choosing. If you are, for example, exporting to YouTube, you can choose the YouTube template and you don't have to worry about your export being rejected by the platform by some technical reason. You can choose a preset for H.264 and H.265 master files. There are also export presets for Hyperdeck, YouTube, Vimeo and IMF, just to name a few. If you have created and saved your own custom export presets, those are listed first in the preset list at the top of the render settings panel. Presets can be very handy. We often have recurring settings and destinations for our deliverables. These settings can also work as good starting points for the settings of our exports, as the presets can be easily created, changed and updated. For you to have your own quick export settings showing as an option in the other pages of Resolve, it needs to be done as a single file. If your render setting is using the individual clips option, the preset won't be listed in the quick export menu. Custom export is the default in the render settings panel. The other option is to use some export preset. The second setting in the render settings panel is the file name. This is where we type a name for our exported file. Let's name this one as 22 export tutorial slash bit tools. Do check out my YouTube shorts episode on the best naming conventions for media files. I like to check the use unique file names option which then adds additional characters to every rendered media file to guarantee that each rendered media file has a completely independent name. Then from the location, we can click the browse button to browse for the file path to choose and create. If need be, the folder which we want to become the destination for our exported file. If you leave this destination unassigned, you obviously won't be able to render anything. Next, we can choose whether we want to render our export as a single clip or individual clips. Usually, we want our export to be rendered as a single file, which is why it's the default here. The separate files option should be picked only if you have a specific technical need for that. Also, if you want to create and save a new quick export preset to be available, you can only do that with the export as a single file option. With the individual clips option, each clip from the timeline selection is rendered as individual files in the format you choose. Timecode for each clip is cloned from the original source media, helping the potential conforming of the media on some other workstation or NLE. If you have mixed frame rates, each clip will retain its original frame rate. Effects can be either ignored or be baked in into the individual files. For that, there's the Render Timeline Effects checkbox. Render at Source Resolution checkbox determines whether your individual files will retain their original resolutions or will they all be rendered to the resolution which your timeline is using. When we choose to render individual clips, we can then go to the File tab in the Render Settings panel and choose Use Commercial Workflow. Using this, we can set the export of multiple versions of the same source. With this, we need to choose a file naming scheme for the file versions to have unique names and then assign the files their own separate subfolders. This is often deemed essential for VFX and grading exports. Next, we have the tabs for video, 
audio and file settings. The options in the video tab, which is open by default, depend on choices. Certain format support only certain codecs, etc. The same goes to the options in the audio tab. The available options depend on what video format you have currently chosen. From the audio tab, you can choose a different audio codec, sample rate, bitrate, the number of audio channels, and so on. With Resolve 19, we now have the option to normalize or optimize the audio to comply with a selected loudness standard. With the Normalize option, either one is scaled, loudness level or peak level, whichever first exceeds the selected thresholds. With the Optimize option, both loudness and peak levels are adjusted, which ensures that loudness meets the desired range and peaks remain lower than the selected threshold. So you could say that the normalization option performs the mere technical tweaking of the audio levels to meet with the selected loudness standard. Whereas the optimization aims to more than simply comply with the certain loudness standards, but also enhance the audio quality. If you want an audio-only export, you need to uncheck the export video box. This will obviously have an effect on the available options in the audio tab. When you need to export an audio file, I recommend you to first click the audio only preset, which will then give you the most complete set of format options for you to choose from. Probably the most common thing we do when in the file tab is to choose to name our export using the timeline name so that we don't have to come up with a new custom name, which is the default naming setting. Another thing we can do here is assign a destination subfolder for our exported files. Then there is the Format drop-down menu. There we see a list of available export container formats for the video. This list will depend on the operating system and hardware you are using. If, for example, you are using Windows, you won't have ProRes as an export option, as encoding of ProRes is limited to Apple hardware only. Another significant deviation might be the absence of the AV1 codec. Its availability starts from a 4000 series graphics card from NVIDIA. Just to clarify things, there are formats listed here that are still image formats, which can also be used for video as image sequence formats. And thirdly, there are the native video formats, which no longer operate with individual image files. Another thing to point out is that file extensions usually tell what format a video file is using, but they're not the same thing. Still images are usually dealt with in the color page, as you import and export image files with LUTs for reference or for clients. I like to use the HEIF high efficiency image format when I need to export stills from Resolve. HEIF is the still image format derived from the excellent but unfortunately proprietary HEVC video codec. Resolve can also ingest Canon and Nikon RAW formats and other image formats such as TGA, PSD, DNG and CIN. However, the image file formats that are listed as export options in the Deliver page are under the Video tab, meaning that they are focused on exporting video with native video formats, or with using some image format as a video sequence. Okay, that's it for this video. The following videos on this series of how to export videos will be on the formats and codecs that are available for us to choose from. Each of the formats and codecs are developed to fit some certain practical purpose which could be to ensure maximal quality within the post-production workflow, 
or maximal playability of the video file as a stream, or to achieve maximal compression while maintaining acceptable quality for publication. The third episode will dive on the settings of the most popular video codecs, such as H.264, H.265, VP9 and AV1. You have a good one.